Hey pottery people, welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to show you two different versions of trimming. One that looks kind of like this. It's a simple version of trimming where you don't even have to take the pot off the wheel and turn it upside down. And then we'll do a little bit more complicated version that includes a foot. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with this simplest version of trimming where you don't have to turn the pot upside down. So right after you throw it, you can just do a quick little trimming um, movement and it'll kind of give some lift and create a shadow under the pot without a lot of hassle. And this is the type of trimming that I do. So I'm going to start with my uh, just wooden sort of ambiguous tool from the kit. And <clears throat> the important thing here is to do this slowly. So a lot of times I'll see my students kind of dig the tool in and then move down quickly and you just sort of dig in and make ridges. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of make a little, well that's a bit too high, make a little notch for that tool to rest and then slowly, whoops, and then slowly move down and just take that excess clay out of the bottom of the pot until you get all the way down to the back. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take my needle tool and run it under that ring that I removed so that I can get it off and then you just cut that away. So that stuff I just kind of took off some excess. Now I'm actually going to angle, I'm going to do the same step again but this time I'm going to angle my tool in so I get a little beveled edge that again will put that lift and shadow underneath the pot because you never want it to just look like it's um, totally flush with whatever it's resting on. It's always nice if it has a little air underneath it. So I'll show you that now. I'm going to angle, move really slowly down to the bat again. And then same thing to remove the material that you cut away. Like that. Now from here I would clean this up a little bit and probably come in with my loop tool and just trim a bit away right above where I started to cut off that excess just so that it's, um, there, it doesn't look like there's a protruding bit of clay right there. But really like that's it for this one. And as long as you're throwing your pots nice and light on the bottom and not leaving too much excess down here, this technique will work just fine. Your pot will be nice and light and it'll give it a bit of lift underneath. Now we're going to do a little bit more of a traditional trimming technique where we trim a foot. Um, and it's a little bit more challenging, but hopefully I can show you a few things that will make it a bit easier. And this first part is pretty hard, but I'll show you how I do it. And, but you know, however you can kind of figure out this first step, you do that. Um, so just like when we're throwing, we have to start by centering this piece. And it's, it's upside down because we're going to be removing some excess clay from this part of the pot. So we need it upside down and we need it centered. So you'll see lots of different ways of doing this. You'll see the one-handed technique where you kind of tap it to center. Um, there are also oh, tools that you can use to center it for you, but this is the easiest way that I've found to center. So let me push it off here a little bit. So this would be off. And the way I do it is I just kind of grab it. This is so hard to put into words, you guys, but just sort of push it until I feel that it's centered. <laughs> That's really the best way I can describe that. So if you're struggling with that, I guess just maybe try this and see if you, if you feel what I'm feeling. But again, use whatever technique that works best for you for that, because it, that is kind of a, uh, it's, um, you, you have to find your own way for centering a, a leather hard piece. So let me just get it really good as best as I can. I'll be honest, this pot is an eensy bit off center. So when that means when I threw it, it was just there's a little air bubble in it or something. But when that happens, don't worry, just get it as close as you can. Okay, so I'm going to call that center. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water around the pot. You don't want to get water on it. 
But I'm gonna do what's called lugging, which is where you use clay to stick the pot down to the wheel. And so I want a little water to help my lugs stick. And they look like this. This is just scrap clay. There's really nothing special you need to know about lugs, just that you want them to be nice and soft so that they don't push in on the side of your pot and warp it. So when you stick it down, you're kind of pressing it against the lip of the pot. And so if the lug is hard, it will, it will change the shape of the lip of the pot. So I use three. Um, sometimes people put it all the way around, that's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. Just make sure that they're secure and they're gonna hold your pot in place. And you can do this on a bat. I'm doing it directly on the wheel head, but if you're more comfortable on a bat, that's okay too. You can kind of adjust this process to what you need and what you like. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, from here, I'm gonna take my trim tool and I'm going to take the excess material off of the side. That's the first step to making a foot. So you kind of have to get it, get it ready and prepared to carve out the foot by getting rid of any excess first. I'm gonna have my left hand holding down the pot on the top and I know that a lot of times we sort of get away from that because it feels a bit uncomfortable but your lugs can only withstand so much pressure from the side when you start trimming. So I have always felt like it's just an added layer of, of help in keeping the pot still to have your left hand on top there and supporting. And also, you know, I'm always saying keep your hands together so they're working as a team. So that kind of lends itself to this as well. Okay. I'm just gonna start getting rid of that pesky excess that's always down there at the bottom of a pot. Unless you work really hard to get it scooped up out of there and then sometimes you end up with really thin walls and it's not worth it anyway, so. It's okay, you can always trim it out later. So I can feel that I'm getting close to having mostly the excess that I want off of the pot. I'm, I'm getting pretty close. I'm not going to need to do much more. Just want to kind of get it kind of flush or like not flared out at the bottom of the pot to start with. Okay, cool. That's good. So now I'm going to sort of make a goal line for where I want my foot to be. And this is kind of a wide wide-ish pot. Well, for a one pound pot, it's kind of wide. Obviously, it's quite small in general, but for one pound, it's kind of a low wide piece. So I, I'm not going to be able to make an easy little foot. So I think I might want the edge of my foot to be about right here. So what I need to do now is I need to get rid of this corner and make it round instead of angled like this by getting rid of some more material. So I'm just gonna angle my tool and I'm gonna work it towards that line. And you guys, like knowing how big you want your foot to be, like how to make that, that first line that I just showed you, I, again, it's one of those things that's hard to put into words. It's just something that you, that you figure out after some practice. Okay. So now that I've got that corner knocked down, I can start to make the foot be more visible. And so instead of moving this direction now, I'm gonna kind of move straight down and out to sort of reveal the foot. So it's gonna look like this. This is a real tricky part because this is where you can trim a hole. If you start to feel some waves like this, oftentimes that means your clay is getting really thin in one spot and you don't have a lot left to trim. So that's just something to kind of be aware of. You can still save it at that point though if you can just stop. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to do. Okay, so this pot, this is a pretty low key profile here. So I don't need to make a huge, a huge foot. So I think I'm gonna stop it about right there. So it's coming together. Now from here, just to um, give it a little more definition, I'm gonna bring my tool in on the side of the foot and I'm gonna just, just kind of clean it up a little bit. 
me give it a little more definition right there. And I always lean and look from the side because the whole point of making a foot is that it it uh, gives the, the profile of the pot a little bit more sophistication. So if you're not looking at the profile, um, sometimes you don't get as good of a result. But that's okay. <laughs> if you don't want to lean over every few seconds, that's all right. So I'm tapping so that I can hear if it has like a hollow drum sound. That tells me that this is a little bit thin. And this doesn't sound too thin. So I am gonna go ahead and carve out an interior part of the foot right here from the middle. But if your pot is too thin, just skip it because this next step is for taking out excess from that might be on the floor of your pot. And also it just makes it a little lighter, but you don't always need that. So like whenever I teach people this, they really wanna get into that part where they're carving out the center section. But if you think about it, when it's right side up, it doesn't affect the profile. And if the floor is already thin, it's not gonna affect the weight of the pot. So I just say evaluate whether you need to do this next part or not, because it's not the most important part of trimming a foot, okay? So even though we see them all the time and they, you know it looks cool, you just have to keep in mind, we're only looking at this so much because it's upside down when it's right side up. Nobody will know whether it's trimmed out in the middle or not. But if you do need to do this step, it'll look like this. So I kind of give myself a mark again of where I want the edge of this carved out part to be. And I sort of work my way. And actually, I want to use the loop for the, the round trim for this because I need a little bit more like how to put it into words like scooping action like I, I want it to take out a little bit more than what the flat part does or the flat end I mean and it's kind of nerve-wracking because you can't keep your hand on it here you've got to move it out of the way but I'm just gonna essentially be working back and forth from the center to that interior edge of the foot just to take out as much excess as I can. And you know, if it's only a little bit, that's okay. If it's a lot, that's okay. You just wanna make sure that you get this center trimmed down enough so that it's not flush with this. Sometimes that'll happen. If you only trim a tiny bit here, then the pot will rock because it's not, um, it's not below where, where your foot is. So just make sure that you get that peak knocked down well enough right there. And you saw me laying the tool across it. That's one way that you can test that. So if the tool is not hitting, then you know you've gone down far enough. I'm just gonna do a little bit more here. And I'm being really gentle with my pressure here, not pushing down hard. And then I'm just gonna make, so when I get to this edge of it, I'm angling my tool ever so slightly because I know almost always there's more excess here than here. And you can kind of hear it. That's sounding pretty thin and that not so much. That tapping thing, <laughs> it seems weird, but once you've been doing it a while, it, it helps. All right, so from here, it's just, um, a matter of cleaning it up, compressing, and use your fingers, your sponge, your tools, whatever you want here, it's kind of up to you. And that's how you make a foot.